أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد All praise and thanks is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I thank him and I praise him and I seek his help, and I seek his forgiveness. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead astray. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. This is a great blessing, that this is the first episode of this program, Quran in Depth. Quran in Depth, this is the first episode, this is a great blessing and a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have the opportunity to sit here and to speak about the best subject, the best speech, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful. The thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the glad tidings to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and to the whole ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Jama' Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the companions one day Abshiru, have the good news, have the glad tidings What is the bishara, what is the good news? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَإِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ طَرَفُهُ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ وَطَرَفُهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ فَاسْتَمْسِكُوا بِهِ فَلَنْ تَضِلُّوا وَلَنْ تَهْلَكُوا بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا Which means the Quran, one end of it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other end is with you. So as a result of that, hold fast to it. You would never be led astray. You would never be perished after the Qur'an if you hold fast to the book of Allah. How can we bring in our hearts the importance of the Qur'an in our life, in our speech, in our actions? Our lives as Muslims has no meaning to it whatsoever. Without the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous wordings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. Imagine, my dear viewer, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, He spoke the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of Him. And He's the all-hearer, the all-seer. And He spoke the Qur'an subhanahu wa ta'ala to Jibreel, angel Jibreel. And Jibreel alayhi salam brought the Qur'an down to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the best man ever walked on the face of earth as a final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful to all mankind. The importance of the Qur'an, the importance for us to go deep into the Qur'an, to get to learn the explanations of the meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something that is not optional for a Muslim. This is something that is mandatory for every Muslim. And let me say this, for every human being, Muslim or non-Muslim, this is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all mankind for guidance, for them to see how to speak, how to act, how to worship the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And if we go back to the purpose of our life, we will get to see why the Qur'an is important in our life. Why do we need to sit and explain the Qur'an, and to listen and to take not any time, the most precious time in the day and the night, to recite the Qur'an, to ponder over the verses of the Qur'an, and to act, which is more importantly, according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. These are nothing but letters, as one of the early generations of Islam, he said, the Qur'an, letters from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the companions, radiallahu anhum, they used to deal with the Qur'an. They used to ponder over it during the night, in their night prayer, and then during the day, 
they would act according to the Qur'an. They would act according to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of their pondering over the verses of the Qur'an. If we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings for no reason but to worship Him alone. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ This is the purpose of our existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. He did not create the human being for nothing. He created them for the best purpose, and that is to worship Him. And worship, ibadah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two pillars to it. If it's missing one pillar, there is no ibadah, there is no worship. One pillar is the perfect love that the slave of Allah should have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other pillar is the total and perfect submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth. How can a human being love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfectly, love the creator of the heavens and the earth, if he, if he does not get to know the words and the message and the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the companions that they memorized the Qur'an and those who were specialized in the tafsir, in the explanation of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, مَنْ أَحَبَّ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Whoever loves the Qur'an, that means he loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every human being, to some extent, they claim that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. But claims by itself doesn't work. The evidence of someone that has the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart or in her heart is to love the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. Every messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent the messenger with a miracle for the people to see, in which once they see the miracle from the messenger, they would believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they would believe that this messenger was sent by the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he had miracles that people saw with their own eyes at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But the living miracle, till the end of time, because he is the final messenger, is the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the miracle of the Prophet ﷺ from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the biggest miracle. Why? Because it's the miraculous wordings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith. That he said alayhi salatu wasalam, مَا مِن نَبِيٍ مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ إِلَّا وَقَدْ أُعْطِيَ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ مَا مِثْلُهُ آمَنَ عَلَيْهِ الْبَشَرِ there is no prophet among all the prophets and messengers unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him signs in which the human beings, when they saw these signs and verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, signs, miracles from the creator of the heavens and the earth, they believed and they followed this messenger. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, and I was given wahi. I was given as a miracle, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَأَرْجُوا أَنْ أَكُونَ أَكْثَرَهُمْ تَابِعًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He said alayhi salatu was salam, and I hope that I will be the most that has followers in the day of judgment. And this is true. This is true and this is a living miracle that we see it every day of our life. The most religion, the most way of life that people accept when they see this miracle, the Qur'an, if a person ponder over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no messenger to be sent they won't see physical miracles with their own eyes sent by the messenger. The Qur'an is still after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Till the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to save it. For what reason? For the people to ponder over it, to open it, to read it, and to take the lessons from it, and they would see the miraculous nature of the Qur'an in its language, in the facts that are being mentioned in it. And this is something, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, we need to have more than one episode, talk, to episode talking, talking about this principle and about this miraculous nature of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But first, why do we need to have the tafsir, the explanation of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an? Because we have no other purpose of our existence except to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result of that, to worship Him, we need to know how to worship the Creator of the heavens and the earth. This is the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can a person be able to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth if he does not get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him? We need to know first. Knowledge comes first before actions. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart by itself is not sufficient 
unless the person humble himself as a slave. We are servants of the creator of the heavens and the earth. We need to humble ourselves to get to know first what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. How can we know this? Except from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the direct miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an that he sent the messengers with books. There is the Torah was sent to Musa alayhi salam. And the Injil, the Gospel was sent to Isa alayhi salam. And it's mentioned in the Qur'an that it had in it hudan wa nur. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in the Torah guidance and light. And the same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in the Gospel, in the Injil, to Isa alayhi salam, hudan wa nur. And go back to the Qur'an in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Surah number 5. From verse around 44 and after that, you would see these facts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these books to these messengers. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he had revealed this book, this Qur'an, as a way of guidance to all mankind. And it confirms what has been revealed to the books before, in the books before. And it has this power that this is the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abrogates all the books and all the verses before the Qur'an. So this is the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings. And we as Muslims, we need to give more time and more attention to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, if we don't do that, we might fall into the category of deserting the Qur'an, which is something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا That the Messenger of Allah would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my people had deserted the Qur'an when they abandoned listening to the words of Allah. When people abandoned memorizing the words of Allah, when they abandoned pondering over the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the topic of this series and this episode is to go deep into the Qur'an. To ponder over the verses of the Qur'an as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Qur'an. كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلْيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us. That this is a book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's mubarak. It's blessed. It's a blessed book. For what reason? لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ For them to ponder over its verses. For them to ponder over its verses and it's a reminder for those who have sound minds. So this is not an option. This is a mandatory thing for each and every one of us. So that we ponder over the verses of the Qur'an, verse after verse. Over 6,000 verses of the Qur'an. We need to have the time. Yes, life is short. But if we have this, the, the proper intentions, the sincerity, that we say, Oh Allah, we are your slaves. And this is your book. This is the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to know and to humble ourselves to get to know what you want from us so that we can humbly surrender in the full surrendering and submission to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can never do that unless we take the time to listen to the tafsir and the explanation of the Qur'an. Before we go to break, I want to tell you an incident, very short incident that shows how the early generations of Islam they used to respect this so much. Their life was about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. One of the scholars of the tafsir, his name is Masruq, one of the students of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Sha'bi, he was narrating, saying that Masruq traveled all the way to Al-Basra in Iraq. For one verse, he's trying to see the tafsir of it. When he got to the Basra, he was told that the person that you're looking for that will give you this tafsir and this benefit and this explanation of this verse, he had traveled to Syria, to the Sham. He traveled all the way from Iraq to Syria again to get the tafsir, the explanation of one verse. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah, we have things easy and the means are so simple and easy and comes with it the heavy responsibility. That alhamdulillah you don't have to travel too much to get the tafsir of the Qur'an, but we have to take the effort and the time, and most importantly, the sincerity in the heart, that the intentions is to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, to perfect the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts, and know for sure definitely, with certainty, 
that the more the person spend the time and the effort in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we would perfect the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. And once this is there, then we don't need to know much actually after that what's going to happen. This is the happiness, the joy of this life and in the year after is to hold fast to the book of Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to take the time to ponder over the verses of the Quran and to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Stay where you are. We'll, we'll be back inshallah ta'ala with more of the benefits of the tafsir of the Quran. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ So this is an open invitation for everybody to recognize God and enjoy His blessings in this life and His mercy in this life and in the hereafter as well. Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Each name has a meaning. Each name signifies a nature of Allah the Almighty which no one shares or is compared to Allah in it. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. The situation of the Muslims today, we all know how all Muslims, they complain of how the state of the Muslims is in such a way that everybody is talking about how can we regain the glory that was present at the time of the early generations of Islam. What we heard in the beginning is something that is very linked to how can we bring back the glory of Muslims. is by holding fast to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by knowing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And by the way, this program has an email for your feedback. If you can please uh, write to us, we will try inshallah ta'ala to respond to these emails. The email is Quran in depth at huda.tv. So when we look into the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can we have the effect? First, we have to have a personal effect after reciting the book of Allah and after learning what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. This effect was present at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It's essential for the change of the situations of the Muslims, for the personal, each and every person to change according to the Qur'an. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way it changed the companions radiallahu anhum and the early generations of Islam. And this is the purpose of how, having this program, is to go through the Qur'an verse by verse with the proper principles to get to know exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, we will be affected, the hearts has to be affected, and as a result of that, the total submission will be in place. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best man ever walked on the face of earth, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted to be the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was sent and revealed to him was the Qur'an, and he used to be so much affected alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Qur'an to take the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the best example, or as our role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ That indeed in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best example for those who seek the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. This life is nothing but a passage. And after this life, the everlasting one, either to Jannah, paradise, or the hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. And as a result of that, we have to take the matter serious. The Quran is the guide for us to take the believers to Jannah, either to take the believers to Jannah, or to take the disbelievers and the sinners to the justice and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. So as a result of that, Let's examine in few examples how the Qur'an affected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions radiallahu anhum so that we can have this eagerness to have the same effect and how we are far from having this effect because of the sins, because of the forgetfulness, because of not having the enough time and the effort to give to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the sincerity to turn to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time he told me 
recite the Quran to me. He said to the Prophet والسلام, I recite the Quran to you and it was revealed to you, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, said, I love, I like to hear it from someone else. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to like to listen to the Quran so that we have a portion of our day that we listen to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet وسلم, asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to recite the Quran to him. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud recited in Surah An-Nisa till he reached the verse فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا which means in the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a witness over every nation and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be the witness for all mankind. At this moment the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud حَسْبُك which means stop meaning stop reciting. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, I look to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِذَا عَيْنَاهُ تَذْرِفَانِ That the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu was shedding tears as a result of the effect of this verse into the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as a result, the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu was full of tears as a result of the meaning that the Prophet sallallahu will be a witness for or against the human beings in the Day of Judgment. The Prophet وسلم, will be a witness for the human beings, those who believed in the Qur'an, those who acted according to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be a witness against those who rejected the Qur'an because the Qur'an is sent to all human beings once the Prophet وسلم, was sent till the Day of Judgment. Also Aisha radiallahu anha, she said in a long hadith, that the Prophet وسلم, got up one night and he was making the night prayer. And he kept weeping والسلام, till what's underneath him became wet as a result of the Prophet وسلم, weeping from the effect of the verses of the Quran in the heart of the Prophet والسلام, till the time of Fajr came, Salatul Fajr, when Bilal عنه, he entered onto the Prophet وسلم, to take the permission from him so that he would make the iqama, the establishment of the Salah of Fajr. Bilal radiallahu anhu, he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in such a state, weeping as a result of the effect and the humbleness received by the verses of the Qur'an. Bilal radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa O Prophet of Allah, you are weeping and your previous and future sins has been forgiven. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Bilal radiallahu anhu, لَقَدْ أُنزِلَتْ اللَّيْلَ عَلَيَّ آيَاتِ That this night, verses of the Qur'an has been revealed to me. وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ قَرَأَهَا وَلَمْ يَتَدَبَّرْ مَا فِيهَا The Prophet وسلم, said, Woe to the person that would recite these verses that was just revealed to me tonight and would not ponder over it. And these are the last ten verses in Surah Al-Imran. Surah number 3, chapter number 3 in the Qur'an, go back and read these last 10 verses. And inshallah ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, we'll go through them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Woe to the one that recites these verses and does not get or ponder over these verses. And as a result, the effect of these verses, how would it be in the hearts? It should have the same effect as the Prophet sallallahu was affected. He was weeping alayhi salatu was salam. Jubair ibn Mut'im, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa before he was a Muslim, he heard Surah At-Tur, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was reciting it in the Salah. أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بَلْ لَا يُوقِنُونَ أَمْ عِنْدَهُمْ خَزَائِنُ رَبِّكَ أَمْ هُمُ الْمُسَيْطِرُونَ The verses in Surah At-Tur that says, Are they the ones that they were created for from nothing? Or they are the creators. Or they are the ones that created the heavens and the earth. Or are they the ones that have the treasures of the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or are they the ones in control of the creation of Allah. Verses in Surah At-Tur. He said, when I heard these verses, كَادَ قَلْبِ أَنْ يطير. My heart almost flew, fly. Meaning the, the, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the effect how much the heart was affected by such verses that he felt that his heart would leave its space and it would go fly somewhere else. This is to give the picture of how the heart was affected by three or four 
verses of the Qur'an was recited. The disbelievers, they heard it. They heard the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. They were affected. And as a result of that, the whole world was changed at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and afterwards as a result of the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Iyas ibn Mu'awiyah, one of the early generations of Islam, he said that the Qur'an, the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it's like a message, a letter, came to people from a king. Imagine this example. That a letter came from a king and it has some very important concerns that either people will be rewarded or they will be severely punished. But some of them, they received the letter and it was totally dark. They could not read the letter from the king in which they're supposed to act according to this letter. Imagine how their affairs would be. And compare this to other group of people when they received the letter from the king that has these severe warnings and have the glad tidings for those who would act according to this, to this letter. And as a result of that, they had light. They were able to read it. He said, it's exactly the same. For those who would have the tafsir, have the explanation of the verses of the Qur'an, and those who would just recite the Qur'an just maybe to get some rewards, just for reciting but without pondering over the verses of the Qur'an, what's the benefit of the Qur'an then? If it's only to be recited to seek blessings, if we do not take the meanings and the blessings and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to do and as the companions radiallahu anhum. There are some verses of the Qur'an when it was revealed affected the hearts of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ a great deal. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu he said that they used to take 10 verses of the Qur'an, they would recite it, learn how to recite it in the proper way, learn its meanings, learn the effect of it and how to act according to these verses and then they would go to the next 10 verses and so on. They won't just recite the Qur'an and that's it. They want to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. And as a result of that, they learned the Qur'an and actions together. As he said, radiallahu فَتَعَلَّمْنَا الْعِلْمَ وَالْعَمَلَ جَمِيعًا That we learned the knowledge from the Qur'an and we learned how to act according to the Qur'an. And this is what we're missing. This is what we're missing today, that we bring the knowledge with the actions. We need the knowledge. Knowledge and actions, they go hand in hand. If one goes beyond the other, then there's a deficiency. If a person learns the Qur'an, but does not act according to the Qur'an, what's the benefit? The person will have transgression. He would have arrogance as a result of the knowledge if it's not humbled by the actions and the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person have actions that surpasses the knowledge, he has the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but doesn't care too much, which is actually contradicting, doesn't have the knowledge of the Qur'an, he would fall into the innovations of the religion. He won't be acting according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him. Why? Because this is the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to learn. So both, they have to be hand in hand. The knowledge and the actions, the knowledge of the Qur'an and how to act according to the book of Allah and the sunnah, the way of the Prophet ﷺ. The companions radiallahu anhum, when we see a verse of the Qur'an changing, changing the life of a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Qur'an, for example, and there are many, many examples, and it's uh, very important to be patient. Before we start talking about the tafsir of the Qur'an, we need to have the proper introduction. We need to have the principles laid down and the foundation of how to explain the Qur'an, how to have the proper explanation of the Qur'an, how to benefit from the Qur'an, and how to refute the calls of those who misunderstand the Qur'an and misunderstand the status of the Qur'an in our lives. The companion of the Prophet ﷺ, his name is Abu Dahdah, radiallahu anhu. A verse of the Qur'an was revealed. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَاعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا Which means, who would give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan? This is what literally the verse means, translates. A loan, qard. Who would give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, would reward the person with multiplications of the rewards. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ to ask first, and this is our attitude should be, we need to ask first, what does this mean? He's asking not to be able to have knowledge to compete with one another, not to look as a knowledgeable person, 
but to act and to humble ourselves and himself according to this verse. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, أَيَسْتَقْرِدُنَ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ غَنِيُّ عَنَّا Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us for loans? And he is the most rich, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet wasallam told him, Yes, but for your rewards, for you to be elevated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most rich, does not need the deeds of the people. He is asking you to give loans, meaning giving charity for the sake of Allah, so that you will get the rewards and your level will be elevated and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of one's charity and one's good deeds. As a result of that, Abu Dahdah radiallahu anhu realized what is meant by this verse. He knew now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him, not from others. As we always recite the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, or maybe it's someone else. We need to relate it to our own selves. This verse is talking to me. This is what is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would I understand it well and spend the time? Because otherwise if you submit yourself to falsehood, this is a disaster. So we have to know the, the, the knowledge of it, then to act according to it. So he did that radiallahu an, and he went and he gave for the sake of Allah his garden that had 600 palm trees, all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I make you witness that I have given the best of my wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediate response, immediate application to the words of Allah. And this is the effect that should be present in our hearts, not just to spend an hour or so hearing about the Qur'an and feeling good about what we hear. And then after the matter is over, we go back to our own habits. No, we need this to be a life changing for us. We need to change our life to the best, to the perfect way of life, the way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us, Islam, total and perfect submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an, the words of Allah. What else, what is best than the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And through the speech of Allah, we will get to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa With them both, a person would reach the final destination in peace, the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prepared for the believers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit and stay where you are still. We'll get back inshallah, we'll come back with another segment for us to ponder more of the effect of the Qur'an in the life of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Who should you marry? When is it time for divorce? I want my children to love Islam, but I don't know how. The Qur'an and Sunnah has the answer to these questions and more. To find out what those answers are, check out Family Issues and see the difference clear guidance makes. Alhamdulillah, We talked about the importance of the Qur'an, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how the Qur'an had its effect in the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and in the hearts of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them, and they were pleased with him as a result of how much importance of the Qur'an they gave into their lives. Their lives was nothing but about the Qur'an. They wait for the verses of the Qur'an. They want to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them, for them to apply and to submit totally to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as it's mentioned in the authentic hadith, he gave them the proper understanding. The Qur'an gave us the proper understanding of things, to see what is right and what is wrong. The Prophet ﷺ went to the people of the Sufa. And these people were the poor companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They used to stay in the back of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. They didn't have places to live. They were so poor that they didn't even have enough clothing to cover themselves. 
the Prophet ﷺ went one time to them. And he said to them, أَيُّكُمْ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَغْدُوا إِلَى بُطْحَانْ أَوْ إِلَى الْعَقِيقِ Who among you would love or would like to go to Butan or Al-Aqiq, place outside of Al-Madina, 10 kilometers or so, outside of Al-Madina, the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَيَأْتِي بِنَاقَتَيْنِ كَوْمَوَيْنِ مِنْ غَيْرِ إِثْمٍ وَلَا قَطْعِ رَحِمٍ And he would come back with two camels, with big hump, very expensive ones, without committing a sin and without severing the ties of kinship. Imagine this example, this parable that the Prophet ﷺ gave to our life today. Someone would go and come back with the two most expensive cars or transportation and so on and so forth. Many people would love to do that without having to commit a sin, without stealing, without severing the relations of kinship and so on and so forth. And the Prophet ﷺ was speaking, was speaking to who? To one of the most poor people on the face of earth. They said to the Prophet ﷺ, We all love to do that, O Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet ﷺ directed them to what is even better for them. He said, والسلام, If one of you go to the masjid, to the house of Allah, فَيَعْلَمْ أَوْ يَقْرَأْ آيَتَيْنِ If he learns two verses, and see the word, if he learns two verses, or recites two verses of the Qur'an, is like two camels. And three verses is like three camels. And four verses is like four camels. And the more, the like would be. This is what the Prophet ﷺ directing them, that these are treasures for the Muslims to learn. Each verse in the Qur'an, we need to treat it as a treasure. A treasure that would change the life of the Muslim forever. Why? Because every verse in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it such characteristics that it's enough to be a life changing. Because as we would see inshallah ta'ala that every verse in the Qur'an brings this humbleness, the meaning of being a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a result of knowing the miraculous wordings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hearts will have this humbleness. And the tears would shed, or the eyes would shed tears as a result of the person given the time and the effort to learn the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we need to direct our precious times, to learn the Qur'an, to act according to the Qur'an, to change our situations, to change the situations of the Muslims in general by following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of Allah, the Qur'an. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, and again, i just mentioning some of the examples for us to have this eagerness, so that we listen attentively, so that we learn the Qur'an, so that it's not just about the program, is that our life will change, is that we take the time out to go to someone to teach us the Qur'an, for us to take the time out to memorize the Qur'an, that we make our children, we have a teacher for them to make them recite and memorize and learn the Qur'an, to learn the language of the Qur'an, which is another subject. Then inshallah ta'ala, if Allah give us life, I want to talk about it. The importance of the Arabic language, because without the Arabic language, we cannot really comprehend the essence and the deep meaning of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So this is our duty. So the companions, radiallahu anhum, when the last few verses of Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed, and we know the virtue of Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, there is the best and the most virtuous ayah, verse, which is Ayatul Kursi. But the last two verses of the Surah Al-Baqarah also are treasures, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the Hadith. So when the third verse before the end of Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوا يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Which means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs what's in the heavens and what's in the earth. He's the owner of all things. And if you would show what's inside of you or conceal it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for it. This is such a heavy order. The verse says that if you show something, show an action or a speech or whatever, or you conceal what's in your heart, Allah will punish you or reward you as a result of that. So He would forgive whoever He wills, and He would punish whoever He wills, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things. When this verse was revealed, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they came to the Prophet ﷺ, حَتَّى جَثَوْا عَلَى الْرُكَبِ 
they fell on their knees in front of the Prophet as a sign of they are helpless. They are in so much fear. The verse means that if you have some thoughts in your mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for it. That the person will be punished as a result of just thoughts, which is something that is over the capacity of the human being. That means everybody will be punished. Everybody will be doomed. We know that it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not questioned. We're not held accountable as a result of only whims. But once this becomes an action, then the person will be either for, uh, forgiven or a person will be punished or will be rewarded. So as a result of that, when this verse was revealed, to see how the companions, radiallahu anhum, not just a verse, let's recite it and get with every letter we recite, 10 rewards and alhamdulillah the matter is good. This is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them, that they will be held accountable for everything that they show or conceal in their hearts. So they went to the Prophet ﷺ and they fell on their knees. They said to the Prophet ﷺ, O Prophet of Allah, we have been ordered with things that we are able to do, that we can bear. And they mentioned, what are these orders? Salah, zakah, prayers, establishing the prayers and paying the zakah, and jihad, fighting in the cause of Allah. All of these orders of Allah, we are capable of doing it. And this is another benefit. See how they said, these are all easy deeds. These are deeds that we are capable of doing it. And imagine the life of some of the Muslims today, that salah, establishing the five daily prayers, is such a burden, that they're not able to fulfill this second prayer of Islam. Anyway, so the companions, radiallahu anhum, they said to the Prophet ﷺ that, and they said, but this verse, we cannot, we're not having the capability of applying it. Meaning even the whims, that sometimes a person doesn't have control over it. This is something that we cannot bear. The Prophet ﷺ told them, do you want to be like the nations before? They said, سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا They said, we listen and we disobey. See, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا وَفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ See, we listen and we obey, O oh, our Lord, غفرانك. we seek your forgiveness. And to you we shall return. This is the most merciful. We are nothing but servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the narrator of the hadith, he said, فَلَمَّا قَرَأَهَا الْقَوْمُ وَذَلَّتْ بِهَا أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ When the people recited it, when they said what the Prophet ﷺ told them, that سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا And their tongues, he used the word ذَلَّتْ Their tongues humbled itself. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We listen and we obey. This is the attitude of a Muslim. Not why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do this. Why this, why that? Nothing but we listen and we obey. Submission. Total submission to who? Not to a human being, but to the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala that promised happiness for those who would obey him in this life and in the hereafter. So when they humbled themselves and they said that, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We listen and we obey. As a result and as a blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of the humbleness of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is the blessings of the companions عنهم, that we need to consider and to believe in. The companions عنهم, had so much favors unto this ummah. One of which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed this ummah by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They are the ones that were entrusted to carry the Qur'an to the next generations and so on. They were the best example after the Prophet ﷺ, practical actions to the orders of Allah in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, because we know for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. As a result of what? As a result of their perfect submission. They had the proper submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, that it's from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to recite that every night before, before a person goes to sleep before Maghrib time. From the adhkar to be said at night time. آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مَدْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Till the end. And in it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieved the believers from such a burden. He said subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not put a burden on any soul unless it's capable to carry it. So as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieved this ummah from the whims 
and the thoughts to be punished as a result of their own thoughts. Unless we speak it, unless we act according to what we think, otherwise a person won't be questioned, won't be punished as a result of the whims, as it's mentioned in another authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is all as a result of the submission of the companions. We learn from this example how the companions, they went to the Prophet ﷺ, and we'll get back to that inshallah ta'ala. They did not interpret the verse based on their own desires or their ability to knowing <clears throat> the Arabic language. They went straight to the Prophet ﷺ and this is what we need to do. But if the Prophet ﷺ is not among us, his sunnah, the way of the Prophet ﷺ is still among us till today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had saved the hadiths, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The sunnah explains the Qur'an as... We will explain that next time inshallah ta'ala. So they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the intentions to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. They had the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so once they know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them they would do nothing but perfect submission. And this is what we need to do today. Another example, <coughs> and bear with me, but this is very important. Anas radiallahu an. He mentioned that there was a group of the companions radiyallahu anhum sitting in the house of his father-in-law, Abu Talha radiyallahu an, And they were drinking wine before it was forbidden. As we know that wine was not forbidden immediately from the first verses of the Qur'an. It came later on in Medina when the verses of the Qur'an was revealed, forbidding the believers from drinking intoxications. Then this is valid till the Day of Judgment. But before that, the companions radiallahu anhum, they were drinking in the house of Anas radiallahu anhu. Anas radiallahu anhu, he heard someone outside calling that the verses of the Qur'an has been revealed forbidding the people from consuming alcohol or wine or intoxications. And this came in levels of course as we know. As a result of that, once they heard the verses of the Qur'an, they didn't even recite it yet. They just heard someone, a caller, saying that. That verses has been revealed forbidding the consumption of intoxications. Anas radiallahu an, he said, Kuntu saqi al-qawm. I was the one that is going around and giving them drinks. He said, once they heard this, they spilled the wine. If someone had a glass in his hand, he threw it. If someone had some in his mouth, that didn't even swallow it yet, he didn't say, well, let me swallow this, inshallah, tomorrow, or next month, or next year, I would start acting according to the orders of Allah. They didn't even say, let's wait till we go to the Prophet wasallam and examine, maybe this scholar is not saying the truth. Immediately, immediate response, and immediate submission, and perfect submission. Even if someone had some in his mouth, he spit it out. It was said that al Medina, the city of the Prophet ﷺ, was full of, these, of this wine running. The streets had running wine in the streets as a result of the full submission to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is, because this is not just stories or a fairy tale. The question is, do we have the same effect today in our hearts when it comes to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an? If the answer is yes, alhamdulillah, this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not by our own power, it's by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we see in ourselves a deficiency, this is the time before it's too late for us to give the time to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And don't have fear. Don't have the whispers of the shaitan that would say to someone, if you get to know the Quran, if you get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you, that means this is going to be a burden on you. That means you have to do certain things that are difficult for you. You would make it difficult in your, in your life. This is all whispers of shaitan. How can one's life become difficult when he learns what the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him? قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ That say by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his bounty subhanahu wa ta'ala فَبِذَلِكَ Meaning as some of the ulama of the tafsir, they say, by the Qur'an they should rejoice. The Qur'an should be the source of our rejoicing and happiness. And if we have the sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring that in our hearts. We will have this full submission 
and happiness is in one's heart and a person would see that in his life if we give the time to explain the Qur'an and to learn the Qur'an and to ponder over it and to act according to it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this sincere for His sake and for us to benefit and to gain the perfect rewards by reciting and pondering and explaining the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. So till next time, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make us benefit and for us to take the time to read and to ponder over the verses of the Qur'an. So we see you inshallah ta'ala next week. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا